Welcome back, all you space anomalies, to another episode of Video Game World Tours, a series where we slow down and soak in a game's environment. Today we're looking at just a few planets in the vast ocean that is No Man's Sky. With you by my side, I'm going to travel to a system never before seen by the human eye, land on a fresh planet, and see what it's all about. Along the way, we'll start to understand No Man's Sky's world generation and become familiar with the language the terrain speaks. You ready? Let's head off. There were a handful of interesting looking planets in the first system I jumped to. I realistically could have picked any of them and found some cool stuff to talk about, but I chose this baby blue one. I didn't know what to expect as I approached it, but as I was landing I realized I should have expected a cold planet. I go back and forth on whether I like cold environments in games. This one I kinda like. The white rocks, blue grass, and green trees really mesh together well, though I wish the trees were a bit snowier. Tall mountains litter the landscape, giving some big picture variety but there's also tiny dips in the terrain to keep you engaged in the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. One of the best parts about visiting planets in No Man's Sky are the creatures. You can find some truly bizarre monsters out there. I adopted this ball of light early on in my journey, and even if I don't bring him out a lot, I still love him. This planet's creatures are relatively normal for No Man's Sky, but still completely bonkers when compared to real life. This guy's got pustules on his underbelly? Kinda gross, but okay. I like his tiger pattern. Not a fan of this anteater guy, though. Look at how small this hammerhead fella is. This game really does have a wide variance in creature size. I'm sure we'll come across a being much smaller than this, just you wait. Look at the clouds up there. What a weird effect. I haven't paid much attention to clouds in real life, but I feel like they don't act like that, even sped up. It's at this point I decide I need to reach the top of that plateau in the distance. I wanted to get a great view of the landscape around me. This creature is kind of like the one with pustules we looked at earlier, but it has stegosaurus spikes. Oh my god, look at that! It's like an amoeba! It's honestly so funny that the game will take the normal sized creatures and just shrink them down to comical levels like that. Before long, I reach the foot of the plateau and begin my ascent. Thankfully, you have infinite jetpack fuel when you're right against a wall like this, presumably so you can escape a cave if you get trapped deep underground. Wow, how about that? You can see pretty far. This is a game where you really feel the scale of its worlds. Like you'll get a quest objective marker and it'll say like 20 minutes away, and by god you could walk that distance if you really wanted to. I don't, but you could. I'm admiring the landscape on the other side of the plateau as day turns to night. The night sky is beautiful. I love how the blue at the bottom of the horizon fades into a green further up in the sky. There's a big pit there. Oh, and a building. I'll go check that out. Just a radio tower with a cozy little interior. I tried to sit in this chair, but I forgot that they spin when you interact with them. I like the banners decorating the ceiling, as well as this tiny little futuristic flower pot thingy, just purely for aesthetics. Shows that whoever built this wasn't wholly concerned with utility, they wanted a bit of flavor. When investigating the big pit, I noticed this particular generation quirk. There's a bit of rock jutting out, which doesn't seem super suspicious at first, but as I rounded the corner, I realized it was paper thin. I love finding stuff like this. The systems that generate planets for this game must be so complex, and to find errors like this, it shows that it's not perfect. Nothing really is but this is a quirk of No Man's Sky generation. You occasionally get weird stuff like this. And I wouldn't have it any other way. This is No Man's Sky. You have goofy landmarks like this 
sandwiched together with actual beautiful landscapes. That contrast defines the game. I left the planet in search of another. I decided to land on a green planet. I wanted to see something more lush. Unfortunately, it wasn't quite the vibes I was expecting. But before I could even comprehend the little details of the planet, I was immediately struck by this planet's terrain quirk. Look at that. How do you even describe it? It's like a plateau but with some curves and warps. They're all over the place. This is what I like about No Man's Sky. You get to see stuff you could never see in real life. Like look at this one. The base is already weird enough, but there's also a little straggler just hanging on by a thread. I wanted to get to higher ground to see if I could spot any other bizarre landmarks. Before I could though, I was distracted with this intensely gross, undulating plant. Should a plant do this? I wanted to get away, but it was so captivating. In my attempt to escape the plant of discomfort, I was greeted by one of its colleagues. Tentacles flowing out from a spherical base as they slowly wave about. This planet is full of diabolical flora, and I wanted nothing to do with them. I burrow my way through the bottom of one of the plateaus to reach the top. And once again, day turns to night as I get a great view of the surrounding landscape. Look at that one way in the distance. It's barely connected to the ground, and yet it looks perfectly supported. I don't see much else of interest, so I carried on. I come across a cave. I'm glad I did. I knew I wanted to talk about the caves of this game at some point. They feel so dank. Stalactites and stalagmites hazardous plants releasing gases, and bioluminescent plants all over the place. These are generally supposed to be safe places from storms, but with all that I just laid out, as well as the fog, it feels like it wouldn't be much better in here. This was a relatively small cave, but I've seen some systems that are massive. They're out there, I promise, I just didn't find any on this planet. I didn't see much of interest for a couple minutes. After all, not every part of a planet can be super impressive. If it was, then the memorable parts wouldn't be memorable anymore. But outside of the landscape on this planet, I like that the game occasionally has NPC ships fly through the sky. It makes planets like this feel a little bit more alive. These ones flew super close to the surface, and off they go. Literally, right as I get back to walking, I'm confronted with a floating island. No hanging by a thread here, this rock is completely suspended in mid-air. Like, I can understand how features like this can accidentally generate, but this type of floating island has to be hard-coded. It's just so perfect. How do you even reach the top? I could have built a dirt pillar with my terrain manipulator, but I decided to just fly up there with my ship. I guess it's not as impressive from this angle. It's only special when you can see that it doesn't have any support holding it up. Nothing else caught my eye, so I kept on walking. Sure enough, I came by another floating pebble. Thankfully, dawn came, so we can see it in better light. Oh yeah, that's majestic. I flew up to the top again, and yeah, this view is much nicer during the day. Aw, look, there's a rainbow. I wanted to get a better look of the island, so I went into photo mode. I noticed a mineral vein generated on top of the island, which was made deep enough to the point where it sticks out on the bottom. What a goofy little situation. I moved on and felt it was about time to search for another planet. It was at that point a crashed freighter poked its head out from above a nearby hill. I visited them before, they're nothing special. Plus it was really far away, so I just enjoyed the view. I 
I was getting kind of tired of inhospitable planets. I still wanted something more welcoming. So I made my way to another green planet and... Well, it's like I didn't even leave the second planet. It does have a few differences. Like the ground color is slightly different. The flora and fauna are different. And the sky is a beautiful pink. But overall, the vibes are roughly the same. I guess that's something you should expect when exploring a game with innumerable planets. Some will just kind of be the same. And honestly, that's fine. I did some math in an earlier video, and based off the numbers I had, there's a maximum of like three quadrillion explorable planets in this game. I'm fine with a lot of them being really similar. But of course, not everything is the same from this planet to the last one. It does stand out in its own way. The creatures here are beautiful. As I stopped to greet this majestic biped, some wheel-like animals sped by. I decided to leave them be and fully soak in this beast. After a bit, he had enough and walked away. Look at that sassy little jaunt. This guy has six legs, and before I could even comprehend that, my eyes were drawn to his eyes. They look so goofy. I went in photo mode to get a better look, and was a bit surprised that they weren't as cartoony as I thought. At a distance, it looks like a yellow circle with the pupil at the center. Maybe this is kind of like that defensive mechanism some animals have, where they have a pattern on their back to distract or confuse predators. If that was the intention behind this little animal feature, then thumbs up to the developers for that. If not, it's a cool happy accident. Here's a better look at the roller creatures. I love just the sheer creativity of the developers. Like, yeah, fauna is procedurally generated, but it has to start with a base. Like, do they walk on four legs? Six legs? Do they fly? And then after that, all the details are added, like a color scheme, horns, or spots. Just the base of this animal is so bizarre. Admittedly, I don't know my rare animals, but I'm gonna go out on a limb and say nothing like this exists in real life. But by god, I'm glad the minds at Hello Games made this a reality. Here's another goat-like creature. I got you a real good close-up. I hope you appreciate it. After a good bit of wandering in an attempt to find anything interesting, I found something. Water. Unfortunately, it's a pretty shallow lake here, so we don't get to explore the ocean depths like I was hoping to. But just look at the color of the water here. And it's so clear. What a beautiful scene. There's not much of interest underwater, but it does have that base level of detail that you see in most places like this. I like all the kelp and bushels of random flora. It distracts you from the fact that this is a relatively flat plain stretching out as far as the eye can see. As I was preparing to leave, I did discover some earthen pillars sprinkled across the landscape. So far, all three planets we've looked at have had quirks that can be summarized as weird plateaus. But hey, I still dig it. In the search for Planet 4, I decided to do the tiniest bit of recon before landing on a planet. I didn't want this video to be almost all green toxic planets. I was looking at the descriptors of the planets when you survey them in space, just looking for an adjective that caught my eye. I saw that this planet was ossified. I have no idea what that meant. I still don't know what it means. Uh, hold on. turn into bone or bony tissue. Bit of an ominous description for a whole planet. Landing on the surface, it sure is unique. Are these things bone? Kinda gross. But man, this planet really is overrun with this design style. Look, some of these things are living animals. It's so bizarre that the inorganic rocks are basically the same structure of the organic beings. And these truly are living. Look, the game gives you some details about them. This one's a juvenile. 
He's reckless and has a diet of... blood. Where does he get that? This type of creature is the only being that inhabits this planet. In retrospect, I maybe should have kept an eye on my blood and make sure it stays on the inside, but I trusted them for the time being. There's also these floating... what do you even call these? Globules? So many of them just hanging out in the sky. What a bizarre ecosystem all around. I did find a bigger cave than the one I found on the second planet. This is what I like to see, just some tunnels dug out underground. There's this kinda weird, undecorated section of the cave. Like on this side, there's all kinds of the bony structures and some other flora, but on this side, there's almost nothing. It looks like something crashed through from here to the other side. Bizarre. Heading back to the surface, I got to thinking about just how weird this planet truly is. Like this bony style with these few decorations cover the whole planet. All the planets we've looked at so far have had a handful of different decorations. Look at how many different plants, animals, and minerals you can see from just this screen. And compare it to this. That low variety makes it stick out to me. Turns out, this is an exotic planet. Planets are given certain biomes when they generate. Like the first planet we looked at was an ice planet, and it was ice all over. This planet is full of whatever this thing is. There's a certain amount of exotic biomes out there. So there are most definitely an insane amount of planets out there that look just like this with these ossified stars all over the place. But the first time you find one of its kind, it's memorable. I actually have come across one of these before, but look at how many others I have yet to discover. So many bizarre planet types left to find out there in the galaxy. For the final planet, I decided to break protocol a bit and visit a planet that has been seen by the human eye before. Specifically, mine. Welcome to Zingus, my home planet. This is either the first or second planet I landed on during my most recent playthrough, and I couldn't have found a more perfect planet. The plentiful pink grass was absolutely stunning. I knew I had to build my base here. But I'm not going to show you areas I've been. I've landed somewhere on the planet I haven't been before, just to get a fresh perspective. I've already mentioned it, but the pink grass really does set the vibe for the planet. And it's super dense. All the planets we've looked at in this video have only had tiny patches of grass, if any at all, dotted around the planet. This feels so much more realistic. I guess it is a paradise planet. It really does feel like one. The patches of trees are kinda weird. Like there aren't vast jungles to explore, just tiny little forests all within walking distance of each other. I wonder if there's a planet out there with much bigger forests. Though I like that this planet has room to breathe. The wide open spaces really sell the scale. I found this drop pod while walking around. You can literally see the boundaries of the drop pod environmental chunk as it's cut out of the mountaintop. You can generally feel them in most of their placements, but it's funny how obvious this one is. Another amazing part of this planet is the water. There are tiny lakes all over the place, and they add some much appreciated variety. I actually built my first base pretty close to a body of water like this. The blue of the water and the pink of the grass is such a great combination. In all the planets I've discovered in this game, I don't think I've seen a stronger color palette. Let's hop in and see what it looks like under there. Oh yeah. It's a little bit deeper than the underwater area we looked at on the third planet, and that really helps. Look at that giant… thing. And all the surrounding foliage. It's super chill down here. I really should build an underwater base. The vibes in places like this are exquisite. The sun sets, and the bright pink landscape shapeshifts into a moody blue. Usually I'm kind of annoyed exploring planets at night. They almost always feel inferior to the daytime version. But I kind of appreciate this as its own thing. 
I'm super lucky I discovered this so early in my journey. This planet is beautiful, 24-7. And that's the beauty of No Man's Sky. The game picks from so many variables when creating a planet. The sky color, the terrain type, the plants, the animals. So many different aspects that come together to make a planet unique. And this specific one is my favorite. Check out either of these videos, they're great. And let me know in the comments, what's the best part of your favorite planet in No Man's Sky? I'm curious what features you guys found out there. Thanks for watching and see you next time.